Oh, f Croeso friends, welcome back to Opus L and I, where we finish our projects. Some of them. Sometimes. This one, at least. Today, I am embarking on the final installment of Viking Lyriel. It has been so fun to have a project that came together over the course of several videos. Most things I make tend to be relatively self-contained, so this has been a fun change. Let me know in the comments whether you prefer longer multi-video projects, shorter standalone items, or a mix of the two. I am always grateful for feedback about what best engages everyone. Today, I'll be diving into the lower half of the Lyriel outfit. That means I will need a pair of braids or underwear which will serve as the foundation on which the bottom half of this outfit is built. Luckily, I already have a pair that just need a little alteration to make them work for this ensemble. I also need to make a pair of chausses or tall pointed hose. I had considered making a pair of Hedeby trousers for this outfit to pay homage to the small bit of skirt we see on the Lyriel cover by Leo and Diane Dillon, but in the end I chose to go with chausses, both because of their versatility and because leggings are mentioned in the text as part of the Claire's working clothes. Last but not least, I will need to make myself some leg wraps or winnegoss. Normally these would be woven in long narrow strips specifically for this purpose, but I don't have the time or the loom to weave them myself, so we're going to improvise instead. Everyone, go grab your cuppa. Today, I am drinking the last of my stash of Magnus by Tabletop Teas. It's a warm, sweet chocolate strawberry tea that feels very appropriate for Valentine's week. Let's get into it. I'm starting off these chausses with a pattern that I already have for knee-high hose. I made it years ago for the more feminine medieval outfits I usually wear by wrapping my leg with cling wrap and duct tape and then marking where I wanted all the seams to be. My plan is to trace the piece for the lower leg and then measure the length and circumference of my thigh at various points to add on to the existing pattern. The foot upper and sole pieces will remain unchanged. Quick transfer of the pattern onto a not taped piece of paper and I never forget to add my pattern markings. In this case, I'm noting the grain line of the fabric because these chausses will be cut on the bias to take advantage of that stretchiness. I also always write what the pattern piece is, who it's for, when it was drafted, and what seam allowance is included, if any. These pieces have no seam allowance because I want to mark the sewing lines, not the cutting lines. I 
I'm using blue linen for these chausses because the Claire working clothing is described as a gray cotton tunic and blue woolen hose. I like the idea of color consistency, even if the material is different. I will probably make another pair of these in wool to wear with both masculine and feminine garb when the weather is colder. The first seam also is the instep seam that curves over the top of the foot just at the ankle. I'm going to make this project something of an experiment. People always ask me whether hand sewing or machine sewing lasts longer. So for these chausses, I'll be sewing the foundational seams of one by hand and the other on my machine. Both pieces will have their seams felled in the same way for consistency. For the hand sewn side and all of the felling, I'm going to be using Burnley and Trowbridge linen thread in natural. I like to pre-cut and condition my linen threads to make the process of sewing more efficient and to make everything easier to work with. To do this, I wrap linen thread around my dining room chairs and then rub all of those threads thoroughly with beeswax while they are under tension. You can do them individually, but this is quicker. Then I cut the thread in two places to create lengths of string about 15 inches or 38 centimeters in length. I then iron them on high with a pressing cloth to help the wax soak in and condition the threads. Here is where I do a tiny bit of cautionary boasting. I love hand sewing and I love making tiny back stitches. It's what my hands feel comfortable doing and seeing the little line of stitches makes my brain do the happy buzz. However, 
Stitches this small aren't necessarily historically accurate for the medieval period. Please do not feel like if you are not stitching at 17 stitches per inch or seven stitches per centimeter, you are doing something wrong. Medieval garments average between eight and 12 stitches per inch. I am just ridiculous. After both of the instep seams are finished, I'm going to sew and fell just a couple of inches up the back seam of the heel, just enough to be able to attach the sole piece in one step. Again, the allowances will be finished by felling the fabric upward away from the sole. I'm really picky about having seams or extra fabric under my feet, which is why the sole is all in one piece instead of using one of the more historical patterns that has a seam or two under the heel. break. This is Highland Fling by Auntie Arwen Spices, although I think it's on their website as Heather Tea now. It's got Lapsang Souchong and Heather Blossoms and smells like camping on the Scottish moors. I wanted to take a moment to thank my newest Kofi member, Christine. I can't tell you how grateful I am to all of my members. You make it so much easier to continue bringing quality videos to all my croissants. Stick around after this commercial break for more reasonably aesthetic hand sewing content.
I'll sew the back seam in two stages, one half at a time. I'm doing it this way because I find it easier to fell seams when I can pinch the fabric in my hands with thumb on the outside and fingers on the inside. Sewing half of the seam length at a time means there's less fabric bunched in my palm while I'm felling the seam allowance. The last step before hemming is to reinforce the point of the chausses. These tall hose are held up by tying that point to the drawstring of my braise or underwear. Because that is going to be under a lot of tension and a potential point of failure, I want to reinforce it as much as possible. I'll do this by folding a square of fabric in half diagonally and securing it in place at the top of the point with running stitches along the bottom edge and by enclosing it in the double folded hem along the top two edges. The chausses will be pointed or tied to the braise with finger looped cords that I made a while ago and just happened to be the perfect length. 
To make the eyelets those points will thread through, I'll need my silk twist in white and gray, the closest color to blue I have on hand, my thimble, scissors, an awl, the braise and hose, and of course my cup of tea. Eyelets start by viciously stabbing your garment with an awl. This moves the threads aside relatively gently. The goal is to break as few threads as possible in order to maintain the integrity of the fabric. After I poke a hole in the chausses, I'll use the silk buttonhole twist to whip stitch around the edges of that hole in order to keep the threads from easing back into place. I usually do two passes of stitching, the first widely spaced just to keep everything in place, and then the second more densely stitched to protect the linen fabric from the friction of the cording and to look pretty. These braids are constructed by sewing together three rectangles of fabric, two on the ends forming the legs and the middle one forming the gusset in between for ease of movement. The seams fall just to the inside of my hip bones, which is where I want the chausses points to attach. I'll make the eyelets just beside the seams so that when the chausses are tied to them, the drawstring of the braids will also support the hose. Vikings often wore wool wraps around their calves called winnegas. They helped keep extremities warm and prevented clothing from snagging when walking through brush. Normally they would be woven in a narrow width specifically for this purpose, but I wanted winnegas that matched my vest, so I just cut strips of my leftover fabric to about 3.5 inches or 9 centimeters wide and zigzagged the edges in matching thread. They're not authentic, but they look nice and they'll do. If you're interested in seeing the creation of more authentic Iron Age finished leg wraps from beginning to end, I highly recommend Katya's video on weaving them, which I will link to in the cards and the description box below. These hooks are from Bad Baroness Buttons on Etsy and are reproductions of Winnegas hooks found at Birka. Also, one end of the wrap into a point and then attach the hooks there so that when I wrap the Winnegas from the ankle up, it can secure them at the knee with these hooks.
That's another project done and dusted. I'm actually incredibly sad that I didn't get to do exactly what I wanted to for the final reveal this week. My cousin has a black lab that I was hoping to go frolic with in my clothes and everything, but our schedules were just not quite compatible. Sometime soon though, I do want to do a Lyriel and Dog photo shoot with her. Let's see, upcoming news. Thank you to everyone who participated in the poll about what platform would be best for an Opus LNI book club, and as a result, I would like to announce that I will be launching a Discord on March 1st. We'll be able to do book stuff and chat about sewing and clothing and history, and there will probably be a couple members only boards eventually, but don't worry, you don't need to be a Kofi member in order to join. As soon as I have that all up and running, I will make sure to plaster the invite link everywhere. Uh, in other upcoming news, my partner and I are going to attempt to go to Gulf War this year. It's an SCA event that simulates a war between my kingdom of Anstiora, Texas and Oklahoma, and Trimeris, which is Florida. We meet in the middle and have a week of shenanigans. I'm planning to pack one of my capsule wardrobes and film a video of get ready with me clips and also talk about how it worked and what I would change or improve on for next time. And my question for all of you delightful croissants is, what else would you like to see from an SCA ward? I was planning on also making a vlog style video where I hit the highlights of the event, but if there are particular questions that I can answer or things that I can film, please let me know so I can make notes. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and share with others. And if you're a fan of notifications, click the bell if you haven't already. If you would like to find me on other social media, I am at Opus LNI everywhere, and all of those links will be down in the description box below, along with a link to my Kofi where you can check out my shop, become a member, or just make a one-time donation to help support the channel directly. As always, friends, be kind, do the work, continue supporting marginalized people, and keep creating. Quill. Cool.